Welcome back. You know how much I love diving into the latest tech developments? And you. You sent over a whole stack of articles about Google's Gemini 2.0, let me tell you. This isn't just another AI upgrade. It feels like we're moving from AI that simply understands to AI that can actually act. That's it really is. a pretty big leap, wouldn't you say? In fact, one of your articles called it a shift from multimodality to agency. It's like Gemini has graduated from simply processing information to actually making decisions and taking action based on what it learns. Okay, so I was definitely getting some sci-fi vibes reading through these articles, especially when they started talking about Gemini being able to control robots and stuff. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's break down what's actually new with Gemini 2.0. One thing that jumped out at me was this concept of multimodal mastery. Right, and that's key here. It means Gemini can handle text, images, video, audio, even code, all within the same system. It's like having a universal translator for digital information. So no more needing separate AI models for different types of data. That's pretty impressive. But what really caught my eye was the idea of tool integration. The articles mentioned Gemini being able to connect with things like Google Search and APIs, even execute code. How does that even work? Well, imagine giving Gemini access to a toolbox filled with different digital tools. It can now use those tools to complete tasks, gather information, and even interact with other systems. Think about searching for information online. Instead of just providing links, Gemini could pull the most relevant data from various sources, analyze it, and summarize the key findings for you. That's way beyond just finding a website. That's like having a research assistant built right into the search engine. But, you know, some of the articles also express concerns about AI becoming too powerful with all this access. Is that something we should be worried about? It's understandable to have those concerns. However, it's important to remember that Gemini is still a tool under human control. The way it uses those tools, the decisions it makes, are ultimately guided by the parameters and goals set by its creators. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not like Gemini is going to suddenly decide to take over the world or anything. I mean, those articles did mention some pretty futuristic applications, especially with those prototypes they're showcasing. Those prototypes are definitely attention-grabbing, but they're also carefully designed with safety and ethical considerations in mind. Well, you've definitely piqued my curiosity. Yeah. Let's dive into those prototypes. First up, there's Astra. One of the articles described it as a universal assistant that could be integrated into everything from smartphones to augmented reality glasses. What's the big deal with Astra? Imagine an assistant that understands you not only through voice commands, but also through what you see, hear, and even potentially think. Astra aims to be that seamless interface between you and the digital world. Wow. That sounds straight out of a sci-fi movie. And then there's Mariner, which is described as a web browser research prototype. The article I read highlighted its incredible 83.5% success rate on something called the Web Voyager Benchmark. What does that even mean? And why is it significant? The Web Voyager Benchmark tests an AI's ability to understand and navigate complex websites. Kind of like an online scavenger hunt. Achieving an 83.5% success rate means Mariner can follow instructions find specific information, and interact with web pages in a way that surpasses most previous AI models. So it's not just browsing, it's actually understanding the web and accomplishing tasks. That's impressive. But there's also this element of safety that you mentioned earlier, right? Absolutely. Mariner was designed with a safety-first approach. It only interacts with the website you're currently on and requires your confirmation for any actions that could have real-world consequences, like making a purchase or submitting personal information. Okay, that does make me feel a bit better about letting an AI loose on the Internet. Hmm? But there was one more prototype that really intrigued me. Jules, the developer-focused agent that integrates with GitHub. I've heard of GitHub. It's where developers store and collaborate on code, right? So how does Jules fit into that? Think of Jules as a coding companion. It can help developers automate repetitive tasks, identify potential bugs, and even suggest solutions to complex problems. So Jules isn't writing code from scratch but more like assisting developers in the process. Exactly. It's like having a super intelligent pair programmer who can instantly analyze your code, spot potential issues, and offer helpful suggestions. That sounds like a dream for any developer, especially when you're up against a tight deadline. But with all this talk about AI taking on more tasks, it's hard not to think about the potential impact on jobs. Is this something the developers should be worried about? That's a complex question, and one that we'll definitely need to explore further as AI continues to evolve. However, it's important to remember that AI is fundamentally a tool. 
Just like the invention of the computer didn't eliminate the need for programmers, AI is more likely to change the nature of jobs rather than completely replace them. So instead of replacing developers, Jules might actually help them become even more productive and efficient. Precisely. It's about augmenting human capabilities, not replacing them entirely. Okay, that's a more optimistic way to look at it. But before we get too deep into the future of work, let's shift gears for a moment and talk about how Gemini 2.0 is already changing the way we use something we all rely on every day, Google Search. You know one of the articles you sent actually compared using Gemini-powered search to having a research librarian in your pocket. <laughs> I love that analogy. But how exactly does Gemini change the search game? Well, think about the way we search now. We type in a few keywords, hoping the algorithm understands what we're really looking for. But with Gemini, search becomes more conversational. It can understand the nuance and intent behind your query, even if you don't explicitly spell it out. So instead of just matching keywords, mm -hmm. Gemini is actually trying to figure out what I'm trying to learn or achieve with my search. Exactly. And because it can handle different types of information, it can pull together relevant results from various sources, not just websites. It could even analyze images or videos to give you a more comprehensive understanding of the topic. One of the articles mentioned that Gemini is being used to improve AI overviews. What are those and how do they make search results better? AI overviews are those concise summaries you often see at the top of search results, providing a quick snapshot of the key information. With Gemini, these overviews become even more sophisticated. Imagine searching for a complex topic, like quantum physics. Instead of just getting a list of websites, you might see an AI-generated overview explaining the basic concepts in a way that even I could understand. Okay. That would be incredibly helpful especially for those times when you're trying to wrap your head around a completely new subject. But there was another phrase in the articles that really caught my attention. Multimodal search. It sounds futuristic, like something out of Star Trek. It might sound futuristic, but it's becoming a reality with Gemini. Multimodal search means you can search using different modes of input, not just text. You could search using images, audio, even video. So instead of typing in red shoes, I can take a picture of the shoes I want and have Gemini find them online. Exactly. Or imagine humming a tune and having Gemini identify the song and the artist. Or even using a combination of input, like showing a picture of a landmark and asking, what's the history of this building? That's incredible. It's like we're finally breaking free from the limitations of text-based search. But, you know, with all these advancements, there's always a flip side. Some of the articles touched on concerns about AI bias and the potential for these technologies to be misused. What are your thoughts on that? Those concerns are definitely valid and something we need to be very mindful of as we develop and deploy these powerful AI systems. It's crucial to ensure that the data used to train these models is diverse and representative and that there are safeguards in place to prevent misuse. So it's not just about building the technology, it's also about using it responsibly and ethically. Absolutely. And it's an ongoing conversation that involves researchers, developers, policymakers, and society as a whole. We need to think critically about the potential consequences of these technologies and work together to create guidelines and regulations that promote fairness and transparency. That's a really important point. It's not just about the cool factor of AI. It's about making sure it benefits everyone and doesn't create new problems. Exactly. And speaking of broader impacts, let's zoom out a bit and talk about the concept of agentic AI, which several of your articles highlighted. This seems to be the core of what makes Gemini 2.0 so different from previous AI models. You know, I was hoping we could dig into that a bit more. Mm -hmm. What exactly does it mean for an AI to be agentic? I mean, is this like the first step towards AI becoming self-aware and making its own decisions? Well, let's not jump to Skynet just yet. Agentic mm -hmm. AI simply means that the AI can take actions to achieve a goal rather than just passively processing information. Okay. But isn't that what AI has been doing all along? I mean, yeah. Even a simple spam filter is technically taking action. Yeah, you're right. There's always been a degree of action in AI systems. But with Gemini 2.0, that agency becomes much more sophisticated. Imagine a personal assistant that can not only schedule your appointments, but also negotiate a better price for a hotel room, or even proactively suggest places you might enjoy visiting based on your past preferences. So it's not just following pre-programmed rules. It's actually making decisions based on a deeper understanding of the situation and my goals. Exactly. And that's what makes agentic AI so potentially transformative. Hmm. It could revolutionize how we interact with technology, making it more personalized, efficient, and helpful. But it also raises some important questions about control, transparency, and accountability. 
you're hitting on some of the key themes that came up in the articles I read. There's definitely a lot of excitement about the possibilities, but also some healthy skepticism about the potential downsides. That's a healthy and necessary balance. We need to be both enthusiastic about the potential of these technologies and critically aware of the challenges they present. Well said. But before we get too lost in the philosophical implications, let's bring it back to some real-world examples of how Gemini 2.0 is already being used. We talked about the prototypes, but one of the things that really stood out to me was how Gemini is being applied to Google search. We already touched on how Gemini is making search more conversational and multimodal, but one of the articles mentioned that it's also being used to tackle coding problems. Now, I have to admit, coding is a bit of a mystery to me, so I'm curious how Gemini can help with something so technical. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because it really highlights how versatile Gemini is. It's not just about understanding language or images. It can actually grasp complex logical concepts, which is essential for coding. Imagine typing in a coding question or even a snippet of code that's giving you trouble. Gemini could analyze it, identify the issue, yeah. and even suggest solutions or point you to relevant resources. It was like having a coding tutor built right into Google search. That's pretty amazing. It would be a game changer for students learning to code or even experienced developers facing a tricky bug. Absolutely. And it goes beyond just answering questions. Gemini could potentially assist with tasks like code optimization or even generating basic code snippets based on your instructions. It's really pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI in the realm of software development. You know, as we're talking about all these applications, I can't help but think about the potential impact on other fields. The articles mentioned gaming and robotics, for example. How is Gemini shaking things up in those areas? Well, in gaming, Gemini's ability to understand complex rules and strategies could lead to much more sophisticated and engaging game AI. Imagine playing a strategy game where the computer opponents can adapt to your tactics, learn from their mistakes, and even surprise you with creative moves. That would definitely make things a lot more challenging and fun. What about robotics? How does Gemini's ability to understand and interact with the real world translate to robots? One of the key challenges in robotics is spatial reasoning. The ability to understand and navigate physical spaces. Gemini's multimodal capabilities, particularly its ability to process visual information and translate it into actionable insights, could lead to robots that are much more adept at interacting with their surroundings. Imagine robots that can not only perform pre-programmed tasks, but also learn new skills by observing humans or adapting to unexpected changes in their environment. So we're talking about robots that are more adaptable and intelligent, not just mindless machines following a set of instructions. Exactly. And that has huge implications for everything from manufacturing and logistics to healthcare, and even home assistance. It's pretty mind-blowing to think about all the possibilities that Gemini unlocks. Laka. But, you know, as we wrap up our deep dive, I'm curious about your perspective on the bigger picture. What does Gemini 2.0 tell us about the future of AI? And what should we be thinking about as we step into this new era? I think Gemini is a powerful reminder that AI is no longer just a futuristic concept. It's a rapidly evolving reality that's already shaping our world in profound ways. It's important that we approach this new era with a sense of both excitement and responsibility. We need to foster thoughtful conversations about the ethical implications of AI, ensure that its development and deployment are guided by principles of fairness and transparency, and most importantly, Remember that AI is ultimately a tool that should be used to benefit humanity. Well said. And as we've discussed, Gemini 2.0 is a remarkable example of how AI is evolving from passive understanding to active doing. It's breaking down the barriers between different types of information, empowering us to search, learn, and create in ways we never thought possible. It's a testament to human ingenuity and a glimpse into a future where AI is not just a technology, but a partner in our journey of discovery and progress. And if Gemini 1.0 was about organizing information and Gemini 2.0 is about making that information useful, what could Gemini 3.0 be about? That's the question we should all be asking ourselves. Wow, that's a great question to leave our listeners with. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating deep dive into Google's Gemini 2.0. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those questions coming.